the seventh academic conference on the safety of journalists, which is hosted this year by UNESCO and the University of the Republic in Punta del Este in Uruguay. Uh, I'm Jessica Jarit. I'm the Voice of America's Press Freedom Editor. I'm delighted to open this academic conference on the safety of journalists this morning. Joining us today, um, to my left, we have Gonzalez Baroni. He is the National Director of Education at the Ministry of Education and Culture of Uruguay. Um, Tafik Jalesi, who is the Assistant Director General for Communication and Information at UNESCO. Um, Dr. Gladys Soretta, the Dean of the School of Information and Communication at the University of the Republic, um, was due to speak today. Her remarks will be provided by Chiara Miranda, who is an Assistant Professor at the same university. And finally, we are also joined today by Yolanda Lopez, who is Acting Director of the Voice of America. America. Welcome. So. Uh, today, May 3rd, works, marks World Press Freedom Day, um, but for many of us, those of us who have lived through attacks, threats, harassment, those of you who risk your lives every day to bring us the news, and those of us who advocate for re research and push for solutions to the challenges to media, Press Freedom Day is every day. Globally, we're seeing a decline in the rights for media to report the news. Media watchdog Reporters Without Borders today released its annual index showing the impact the disinformation and polarization and propaganda are having on drowning out public interest journalism. But we're also seeing how collaboration, better understanding of the challenges, and how we can react to them can ensure our colleagues' safety and the protect the flow of news around the world, even to the most censored countries. The panelists and researchers gathered here in Uruguay or joining us remotely for this academic conference will share their experiences, their ideas, and their research. We should listen and learn because our audiences are depending on it. In today's conference, we'll have 17 papers presented on a range of issues, from media safety and war and conflict and covering protests, the importance of resilience and trauma support for our colleagues, and the chilling epidemic of violence directed at female reporters online. But first, as the host government welcoming us in Punta del Este, it's my pleasure to invite Gonzalez Barona, who's the National Director of Education, to take the floor for his opening remarks. Thank you very much and good morning to you all. Now let's switch into Spanish. Good morning to you all. I would like to thank the Assistant National Director. Also, I would like to thank Yolanda uh, Lopez, Acting Director of Voice of America, also to the Dean of the School of Information and Communication at the University of the Republic, Dr. Gladys Sereta, that is with us online, and Jessica, thank you very much for your kind words. Ten years ago in Latin America, I was part uh, of a conference where we exchanged ideas about freedom of speech. Latin America is a complex area, a complex region with governments that are being questioned all the time. It is for us as, as a national government, and we had the presence of the President of the Republic and the Ministry, the Minister of Education and Culture. We are proud to have here the main officials of UNESCO civil society together with me today the media that have traveled so so much to be here especially taking into account this post-pandemic scenario all the things that they've done leaving the families behind the friends behind and they are here the importance of having an in-person event and also to have the academia with us and this is part of our main point of discussion today we're having an academic conference on the safety of journalists uh, so what i would like to take away from this meeting is to have different lines of research to increase our network but also to create a safety network for our journalists. The civil society represent the balance between the markets and society. And journalists within civil society are an important part when monitoring our democracies. Those citizens that just want journalists to repeat what the government say without any kind of criticism should be especially careful. 
violence is has many 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 faces basically it doesn't allow victims to share their opinions and expression secondly they are a threat to our peers and thirdly because they go against the rights of people and societies to try to find news and information in our role we have some duties towards journalists especially preventing protecting and try to find justice we need to look after journalists we need to protect them to do this we need to have prevention measures to targeting especially the causes of violence against journalists and to fight impunity that many times exist in our countries as part of the government we need to adopt and implement and we need to show a speech against violence in order to stop violence against journalists we need to work hard together with other forces like the police so that we can have a direct relationship with the journalist with society but especially with democracy something very important to our countries also we should be respectful of sources of information of journalists we also as part of the government we need to generate high quality data we need to have accurate statistics we need to fight so that our journalists can have access to a transparent government so that they have the possibility of choosing about their future and their possibilities also governments it's government's duty to protect the journalist especially to protect their physical safety and we need to implement specific measures for their protection regarding justice in a country like Uruguay a country like ours in which the state of law the rule of law is so important we need to have the right framework to protect journalists especially to work I would like to thank UNESCO its officials they are enjoying our country a country that has gone through the pandemic in a different way in our own style let's say Uruguayan style with a lot of freedom and we have the possibility of growing and that has allowed us to host this event I would like to thank the University of the Republic where I was able to study free of charge and having access to all possible sources of information I would like to thank Voice of America for being here for protecting journalist rights and for making for going that extra mile to protect journalists in, in other countries that are way more complex and to protect all those voices that need to be heard all over the world thank you very much with us today um, hey I would now like to invite the representative of our um, I would now like to invite uh, Dr. Tafik Jalesi, the Assistant Director General of Communication and Information, to take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, session. My colleagues from UNESCO who have been organizing this event, along with the Ministry of Education and Culture of Uruguay, told me that I have to be in this session. I asked them, why do I have to be in this session? They said, because your background is 35 years of academia as university, uh, university professor, as dean, as minister of higher education. And this is the academic track of World Press Freedom Conference. So I'm so happy being with you this morning because, of course, I have carried out research on various issues like you have been doing. And I'm delighted to know that in this uh, track, you'll be presenting 17 papers which is very much reporting on research that has been carried out on the issue of freedom of expression, safety of journalists. 
I understand this is the seventh academic conference on this topic, and I'm sure, like the previous six editions, this will prove to be a key pillar of the World Press Freedom Day and Conference here in Punta del Este in Uruguay. It's a pleasure to be here along with Mr. Gonzalo Baroni and uh, uh, Ms. Yolanda Lopez, the representative of Dr. Gladys Sereta. Uh, and here I would like also to thank uh, the University of the Republic for the engagement, but also the Voice of America for uh, being with us for this important event. I am very much convinced that academic research is a major go between theory and practice. And I'm sure that research findings do inform policy making and uh, decisions for the benefit of all. Academic research represents one of the six pillars of the implementation of the UN Plan of Action on the safety of journalists and the issue of impunity for crimes committed against journalists. So your work is very important and uh, this, I uh, said, is the seventh edition, and this academic track has been always a pillar of this conference since the 2016 World Press Freedom Conference held then in Helsinki, Finland. So we are keeping up with that good uh, tradition and our vision of, as I said, the research being the bridge between the two worlds, the world of academia, research institutions, and the world of uh, intergovernmental organization like UNESCO with its 193 member states. I'm also happy to see the UNESCO Chair on Media Freedom, Journalism Safety and the Issue of Impunity, Professor Jackie Harrison of Sheffield University is with us here today. Uh, I also would like to recognize uh, the UNESCO Chair along with other networks like the Journalism Safety Research Network, like the Working Group on journalist well-being, like the JetRag network, and also the Global Risk Journalism Hub. These are, of course, very important partners for UNESCO to carry out our vision and to ensure that academia continues to inform policy making worldwide and continue to ensure, ensure our multi-stakeholder approach. What is unique about UNESCO? It's a node with members including member states, governments, private sector, academia, research institutions, and civil society as well. Uh, that's where we see we can, we can have an impact on the ground, we can influence, we can inspire, we can accompany policy formulation and implementation. And of course, this is part of our coalition, coalition building strategy for the implementation of the UN Plan of Action, which I mentioned earlier. You sure, surely you know that the UN Plan of Action will celebrate this year its 10th anniversary on November 3rd and 4th, 2022. And we are delighted that the government of Austria has kindly offered to host a high ministerial level conference on this issue of safety of journalists, also the issue of impunity. And, uh, and of course, uh, we welcome uh, your participation and also uh, feeding with your ideas, research uh, findings, this major event that will take place next November in celebration of this 10th anniversary, as I mentioned. Let me also say that uh, this academic conference uh, has two main reasons in my view. The first one is to galvanize research on the safety of journalists, especially in countries of the global south and strengthening connections among the networks I mentioned earlier. The second key objective, in my view, is to connect academics and policy makers. As we say, two heads are better than one. You represent the independent research with all the objectivity, the neutrality in your work, but also the rigor of the research that you carry out. But that rigorous evidence-based research has to have impact on the ground, and that then comes the second issue of relevance of your research work. It has to be rigorous, evidence-based, and it has to be relevant and impactful for our member states to embrace it. 
Let me uh, just conclude because we have a number of speakers coming up uh, to note the academic consultation that Professor Jackie Harrison and Dr. Sarah Tosner will shortly share with us in launching here the session today. In conclusion, again, let me reiterate how, how delightful I am to see so many researchers representing more than 15 countries joining us today, either in presencia or online, and sharing with us their research work and their academic findings. Welcome to all of you, and thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gillespie. Um, it's now my pleasure to invite the representative of our host university, Dr. Gladys Aretas, the Dean of School of Information and Communication at the University of the Republic. And here in Miranda, um, to my right, will be presenting her remarks. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. I'm going to read some uh, greetings on behalf of Gladys Soretta, Dean of the University of Information and Technology at the University of the Republic, who sadly cannot be joining us today in person, but she has sent her regards. Regrettably, for some personal issues, I will not be participating in this opening session of the academic conference on the safety of journalists on the day of World Press Freedom in 2022 within the framework of the World Conference of uh, Press Freedom by UNESCO together with the government. As you know, the Council of our University in our school has appointed Dr. Natalia Uwala, aggregate teacher, to participate in the organization of this event. Professor Rabal is responsible for the academic journalist session, and she's a reference both in the university and the journalist world. The issues of this conference are extremely relevant to safeguard the access to information and building democratic societies. The panels will approach important topics for journalists and freedom of press in contexts where their work is threatened. In this regard, I celebrate that we have this instance of dialogue and reflection, which definitely will strengthen and ensure freedom of speech and press. From the School of Information and Technology at the University of the Republic, we would like to wish you all the best, and we are at your service to work together to strengthen our links between institutions. Have a warm greetings on my behalf, Dr. Maria Sereta, Dean of the School. Thank you, Kira. Um, right, uh, now I would like to um, introduce uh, Yolanda Lopez, who's the Acting Director of Voice of America, who will be giving a keynote speech on the safety of journalists. Maybe we should welcome Minister Pablo Silvera, Minister of Education and Culture of the Government of Uruguay, who just joined us. Thank you, Minister, for coming, and thank you for the support of your ministry to this conference. Hello. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you to my fellow panel panelists. I thank you to the government of Uruguay, and thank you to the UNESCO uh, for inviting us to speak here today. So we have heard about the government, uh, about the uh, academia. Let me tell you the story about the journalists on the ground. That's what I'm here for. When I think of the important role journalists play and their safety and security, I think back to Afghanistan in August of last year. The Taliban had just seized control of Kabul, and it seemed as if everyone was trying to flee. We all saw the images, people desperately running on the airport tarmac, trying to board an evacuation plane, mothers handling babies over the razor wire fence at the airport. And while some were running for their lives, getting away from their home country, journalists were pouring in, including one tenacious VOA journalist who insisted on covering the aftermath of the fall of Kabul. Everyone around us advises us not to let her go. It is not safe. Uh, you are, are going to be a target. It's too dangerous. But the journalist kept saying, we have to be there. If we don't go there, who is going to tell the story? Um, so she was right, obviously, and she went. Um, this is uh, for news, uh, news managers, news directors, editors. These are the tough decisions we must make um, each day, balancing the need to keep our audiences informed with the urge to keep our reporters camera operators and fixers safe. Eventually, this reporter did go to Kabul. She, uh, we provided her with safety gear, with tracking system, with all the security precautions we were able to provide at that time. 
and because of journalists like her, we have seen the dramatic images of the airport. We captured the desperation of the Afghan people who felt their world and future was crumbling before their eyes. This reporter put her life in danger, but she was lucky. She was able to safely leave Afghanistan and share her stories. Same with so many other journalists from other news organizations that were able to go back to their countries. The same cannot be said for hundreds of local journalists that were silenced for good. Local stringers who for years had been telling their country's story could no longer safely go to work. Many left facing an uncertain future. To this journalist, safety gear, tranquil systems, they were not enough. That was not the answers for them. They needed to be evacuated. We negotiated to uh, get them safe passage to other countries, filled out countless visa applications, some chartered planes, anything to get them to safety. Still their future, for many, continues to be uncertain. As we work to help bring our team safely out of the country, back in Washington, where we have our headquarters, dozens of journalists in our Afghan newsroom were covering what was going on in their own country from far away. Covering a story that affects them personally, because they still have family and friends in Afghanistan. It is a tough situation. They have to set their emotions aside and carry on with the assignment, even though their work puts their loved ones um, back at home at risk. To these journalists, our support comes from um, uh, listening to their struggle and try to help them as much as we can, but there is not enough support for that kind of uh, stress. We are providing uh, means to manage uh, and training uh, for them to manage their stress and their trauma, but obviously it is still uh, not enough. This is just one story, just one story, the fall of Kabul. And I just told you uh, three ways in which that story affected the journalists, uh, the Voice of America, but also journalists of other uh, news organizations as well. Afghanistan is just one example. Every day breaking news brings up the same tough decisions and balancing art. Every day, journalists all over the world are challenged, threatened, and targeted. We are seeing the same situation now in Eastern Europe. Russia has invaded Ukraine. Journalists go in, cover the story, and come back to their countries. Others, local journalists, leave Ukraine and Russia with, that, uh, with an uncertain future. And at BOA, our journalists face the same trauma again. That's our day to day. That's what Voice of America does. That's what it takes to bring the story to our global audience. We have 47 language services. That is 47 newsrooms. Our mission is to report the news in countries where there is no freedom of the press in their own language, 47 of them, to provide a voice to the voiceless. That's what we have been doing for 80 years. But in those eight dec decades, the environment for media has gone through unprecedented change. And to tell those stories is becoming more challenging. We as news organizations can do only so much. Establishing safety protocols and protecting our journalists is certainly something we can do. But we cannot control some of the hostile rhetoric targeting journalists around the world. How can we protect journalists if governments worldwide are targeting their work every single day, threatening them physically and mentally and taking away their means of to earn a living as a journalist by forcing news organizations to close? In the meantime, disinformation, cries of false news and propaganda are spreading, not only drowning our, our independent voices, but viciously attacking the voices of minority and women. In Hong Kong, it's national security. This is, this is just some examples. Um, it's national security in Hong Kong law. Um, an arrest of a staff of pre-democracy media outlets have forced iconic papers, including April Daily and Stand News, to close. In Ethiopia, the government responded to criticism of, government, of coverage of its war in Tigray by calling reporting fake news. In Russia, well, we all know what they are doing uh, to their own journalists. They can face up to 15 years in prison if they don't follow the Kremlin's narrative about the invasion of Ukraine. And for over a year, they have been ramping up its use of a foreign agent law to both limit and burden independent outlets. Other countries, including Nicaragua, which implemented a, sim implemented a similar law related to foreign funding, are using the same tactic, burdening, burdening its country's media and casting suspicion. And journalists that decided to stay in Ukraine to cover the war and pay, are paying the ultimate price. The last one, a journalist from our sister network, Radio Free Europe, her name was Vera Hirich. Not all violence comes from the government. It can also come from organized crime organizations. In Mexico, eight journalists have been killed since the start of the year 
and right groups, uh, rights groups say that every 12 minutes there is a reporter that uh, is receiving some kind of threat. And I can go on and on. Still, we keep reporting. And we applaud efforts from NGOs, from academia, from governments, um, and uh, from the UNESCO itself, that they have outstanding programs, including some that assist countries to develop legislation that favors freedom of expression. But we need everybody's help. We need everyone in all levels of our societies to believe that what we do is worthwhile, that is worth protecting. Now more than ever, we need to bridge the gap between research and the experience of journalists on the ground to reach policymakers and create a lasting change to protect journalists. Today we are being attacked from all directions by powerful interests, by organized crime, by unfair ruling and laws, and by hateful narrative against our work. Remember the images Remember the images that we got from Afghanistan, from Ukraine, or the stories that we have been telling about Nicaragua, Mexico? Like my reporter told me at the beginning of uh, this speech, um, we have to tell the story. We have to go there. If we don't go, who is going to? So that's what is, that's what is at stake. Uh, you want us to keep on telling those stories, then we need everybody's help to allow us to do that safely. If we think that a free press truly is one of the pillars of a free society, then protecting our journalists to do their jobs is everybody's responsibility. And now I would like to just say a few words in Spanish since I'm able to do so, <laughs> and uh, out of respect of the host country, Uruguay. In conclusion, no voy a repetir el discurso ahora. So I will not repeat the speech in uh, Spanish because it would be too long. But if we want a free democratic society, it's our responsibility to take care of our journalists and media outlets for them to do their work as journalists in an independent and safe way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yolanda. Um, so as Dr. Gillespie was saying, this academic conference has uh, several aims. There are three key goals. Uh, one is to encourage greater research into the safety of journalists, particularly here in the Global South. Uh, we want to connect academics and policymakers and provide networking and cooperation opportunities between researchers in this field. Uh, for this reason, we'd like to provide an opportunity for the teams behind a few of the initiatives that we will be discussing in further depth today to briefly present information about their networks. Uh, first, we have a People joining us um, remotely, um, Ola Ogliemi, the Associate Professor of the University of Lincoln, and Lada Price, the uh, who is a lecturer in journalism, will be joining us remotely to talk about their journalism, education, and trauma research group. To hand over to those now. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me well. There's an echo, so maybe somebody can switch off. Hi, everyone. Now, um, JETREC, which is Journalism, Education, and Trauma uh, Research Group, is making an important contribution to the UNESCO Safety of Journalists agenda by exploring the roles of journalism educators in equipping journalism students with the skills to recognize the signs of trauma and cope with the emotional and psychological effects of report reporting traumatizing events. Now, JETREG was established in 2020 at the University of Lincoln, and my co-convener is Dr. Lada Price at uh, Sheffield Hallard, Hallam University. JETREG has been uh, grown very quickly. It has over 250 members worldwide, and JETREG has eight regional hubs worldwide that are semi-autonomous. We have in North America, Australia, you know, Western Europe, sub saharan Africa, Middle East, and so on. JETREC's primary objective is to embed trauma-informed literacy in journalism curricula. Now, in terms of interim milestone, we have launched a special issue, you know, which will be published in Journalism and Mass Communication Educator. And we have submitted a concept note to UNESCO on trauma journalism in the Global South. The research, regional research hubs have been organizing workshops and symposia um, the one in South uh, Asia, they've organized two workshops this week to coincide with WPFD, and the one from Sub-Saharan Africa will be organizing workshop on Thursday, also do the same thing. So they are all raising awareness about the inclusion of trauma literacy in journalism in their region, and also networking with news media organizations to provide institutional support to journalists to cope with the effects of reporting trauma. In terms of long term, JETREC is preparing a proposal for a large grant to develop learning tools 
to promote trauma-informed literacy among journalism students, incorporating theater arts, simulations, and virtual reality. JetRed is also working to produce reading and teaching materials, develop a, a professional development course in trauma-informed literacy for journalism educators, also to design trauma course content and propose innovative teaching strategies for teaching trauma-informed literacies. The reason why we are doing this will be coming up in our um, lecture that will be giving, I mean, our uh, presentation that will be giving later on. So let me pass on to um, my co-convener, Lada, maybe to have one or two words with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ola. Hello, everybody. I am so pleased to be here. And thank you again to UNESCO and the conference organizers for inviting us here to speak to all of you today. And everybody who is attending this um, important academic conference in person and online about the work we do at JetReg. Ola has summarized our um, aims and, and objective. I just wanted to add that, um, first of all, the fact that five scholars that play a very very active role in our research community are here to present their work at the conference speaks volumes about the importance of this work on equipping journalists with trauma resilience skills and journalism educators with the confidence and tools to teach trauma literacy. Um, growing evidence shows that there is a strong link between the safety of journalists and trauma, but trauma literacy and trauma resilience is not fully addressed in our safety agenda yet and is largely missing from the journalism curriculum or training in many countries around the world. The impact of trauma on journalists' well-being was not part of UNESCO's action plan for the safety of journalists, which was adopted 10 years ago. And this is why right now emotional safety is becoming a key component of UNESCO strategy to address the need of psychological protection. And there is strong consensus among all of our JetReg members that we hope that it will be part of the revised action plan and we look forward to contributing to the UNESCO consultations that are about to begin. We have have a fast-growing network of journalists, journalism scholars and educators, psychologists, INGOs, and we are taking an interdisciplinary approach to safety and well-being. We strongly believe that we bring another global dimension to UNESCO's efforts on safety of journalists, and we hope to join forces with the coalition that is leading in this area, namely the Journalism Safety Research Network, the Center for Freedom of the Media, the UNESCO Chairs, and many other organizations and bodies around the world that are working on keeping journalists safe and ending impunity. For the past year or so, it has been very encouraging to us and our research community that UNESCO and other organizations that lead these efforts in improving safety are clearly recognizing that the issue of trauma literacy and resilience has important implication to the efforts to prevent, protect and prosecute and believe much more attention should be focused on trauma, well-being and mental health in journalism. And finally, we need to unite and double our efforts in researching and teaching trauma literacy and trauma resilience to young journalists. journalists. And this is also what JetReg is trying to address. And this is at the heart of our aims and future work. Please do join us in these efforts. That's great. Thank you very much for those comments. Um, we also now have joining uh, Sarah Tosner and Jackie Harrison from the uh, University of Sheffield, who will be speaking on the 10th anniversary of the UN Action Plan on the safety of journalists and the issue of impunity. Welcome. Thank you very much. Yes, um, well, thank you for inviting me to be here and also to speak today. It's absolutely fantastic to be able to um, address you both um, present and online. And so welcome also very much to our online colleagues who have joined this session. Thank you also to Tafli uh, Jalassi um, for the fantastic introduction and support of what we're trying to do in academia. It's really appreciated. And I think from that, you know, it just gives us all a tremendous platform, really, to take this research further. And as, as Tafli said, you know, we, we know about the UN Action Plan. We know that there's going to be a 10th anniversary. We've been invited to contribute to that as an academic community, as one of the six pillars. Um, we know that the issue of safety of journalists, freedom of expression, impunity isn't something that can just be handled by 
one thing, one group at one time in one place. It's not a single issue uh, prospect. It's complex. Journalism is complex, it's, but it's vital for this world. And research can unpack and take time and dig deep into all of these uh, problems. And also to recognize just the complexity of what we're dealing with. And so we're really interested as a, a variety of groups, and it's absolutely fantastic to hear from the groups that are doing such important work around the world, and this idea that we can join together as networks, as groups as well. So this is, by way of saying, this is an official launch for the academic consultation on the UN Action Plan on its 10th anniversary. What we want to do is to host a series of consultations all welcome. Um, we will be sending emails to everybody. We've got an email addresses. It will go via the Journalism Safety Research Network. And I'm speaking on that network's behalf today, as well as from CFOM and the University of Sheffield. Emails, texts, any way that we can get in touch with you, we will do. It, it has to be inclusive. It has to be interdisciplinary. Everyone welcome. We want massive geographical representation. And we also at Sheffield are busily trying to do a mapping exercise, a kind of stock take, if you like, of what's already going on in this area, on these areas. Um, I don't know if we can even label it as one area. But we're doing a stock take, which is a mapping exercise, to look at what's already been done, but nonetheless also to see if we can align that with the new issues and areas that are arising, the new problems and the new challenges that we're hearing about here, um, that we're here about via our networks. Is academia connecting um, well with policy agendas? Is it impactful? Is it impactful enough? Where do we need to take it? How do we make our voices heard? How do we listen to those people on the ground, those people at the policy level? So this bridge, research as a bridge, is really, really important. And what we do is try and facilitate some of those connections, as well as to try and understand very much, of course, what is going on you know, in the world as well as, as, as researchers. So what we want to do is to um, encourage you to get in touch with us. We will, as I said, get in touch with you as well. We have a first um, consultation, which is already planned. That's in Paris. Um, it follows on from the ICA, the, um, the conference that's been held there. So we're trying to collect um, um, and, and to encourage academics who've been to that to come to this. Um, it's hosted at the UNESCO headquarters and it's going to be a chance to talk about what do we mean by safety? Is it expansive enough? Is it the right word? Are we actually, what are we doing under that umbrella? How are we connecting or not? And to identify other areas that we may actually want to research. Um, we're also having another consultation event at the IEMCR conference and then we'll be hosting another consultation in in the autumn and the idea is that what we do is we gather all your views well there'll be prompted questions there'll be dialogue there'll be debate for your interventions um, but what we want to do is to formulate that into a set of recommendations so that we can take those to the ministerial conference on 2nd 3rd of november in austria and so as i say please join um, in with us um, it's so important i think that academia really does make the kind of connections that um, Tafli was talking about earlier, because without that, we're not a very good sixth pillar. We're actually just um, sort of along for the ride. Okay, thank you very much. And um, I look forward to working with you and from hearing from you as well. Thank you so much, Jackie. Um, finally, we have Ingrid Volkmer, who will be presenting on the Global, research, uh, the Global Risk Research Hub. Yes, thank you very much. I hope my internet connection is stable. If not, let me know and I can turn the video off. So um, I'm the, the director, so-called, of the Global Risk Journalism Hub, which is a unique, I dare to say, a massive international network of journalism scholars or um, associated uh, scholars from associated fields. Um, we have 87 uh, scholars from 52 countries many from the uh, Global South who have joined. And the issue we want to address is to focus on risk, but risk not necessarily only in the sense of safety of journalism, which is of course a very important issue. But what we want to do is to see how journalists across the world are challenged when they address 
globalized crisis, globalized risks like climate change, like the pandemic, like migration issues, like humanitarian issues, which are all increasingly globalized issues. <clears throat> However, as you well know, journalism often looks at these issues from a national or even foreign perspective or some sort of international uh, perspective, but journalism research hasn't really fully addressed that. So what we want to do is, or what we are doing in this Global Risk Journalism Hub is to understand how journalists from the global north <clears throat> and the global south, from east and west, from peripheries and centers, are deeply challenged when they look at climate change, when they look at the pandemic and what the key issues are. Research has not really fully addressed that in such a massive transnational perspective. And that's what uh, we do. We have already completed a project on the pandemic, and it was very interesting to see how governments address the pandemic very differently, of course, and, and turn it into some sort of political um, agenda and, and to, to further restrict journalism or journalistic coverage in Egypt or in Malaysia, where they pass laws about fake news, which all came up through the pandemic. So uh, they use this or utilize the pandemic perhaps to put more pressure on journalists, whereas in other countries, misinformation, new actors, bots, et cetera, played a role. So we look at this in a massive transnational perspective. And um, this study is now more or less completed. We are going to publish very soon. We, have, we are planning to um, uh, put out two books, two edited books by the end of this year. And some colleagues have also published their own work. We are also, uh, um, organizing a conference with the ICA. You mentioned the ICA earlier. We're organizing a pre-conference for the ICA on comparative research in the globalized risk ar arena, which is a massive methodological challenge for, for journalism research on a global scale, because most methods are really linked to the global north, to the paradigms of the global north. We don't have anything really that allows us, or any methods or tools really, to compare across the world, which is so much needed in today's you know, massively connected world. So that is what we do. Um, and we plan to um, also involve journalists more. We have media partners. We don't have just university partners. We have already some media partners um, from the Global South who have joined us. And we want to develop our research into training units for these for journalists from these news organizations and perhaps others. But that is the plan. So it's, in a way, an applied research project, but um, it has a massive global scope. And I feel it's much needed in today's world with where crises are more or less always globally interdependent crises. And that needs to be addressed in journalism research as well, and of course, by journalists. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ingrid. Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, today and for our speakers who've presented information on their various research and projects that they have coming up. I'd also like to thank again our speakers, um, Director Baroni and um, Dr. Gillesi, uh, Gladys Retta and uh, Kiera, and finally Yolanda Lopez. Thank you all so much for being with us this morning.